Okay, I think we'll get ready to start. Um, could somebody confirm, please, that my microphone is working and that all looks good, or sounds good, at least on that end? Brilliant. Thank you very much. I appreciate that. Okay, so let's um, move on to week five, and this is lecture nine. And this week's topic is JavaScript, jQuery, and Ajax. The jQuery and Ajax are JavaScript. Okay. There are two different examples of the kind of things that we tend to do with JavaScript, mostly on the client side. I specifically say that I'm going to talk a bit about JavaScript because I'm going to show you some back-end JavaScript as well, a little bit. Um, not a lot, but just enough to, to demonstrate how we might make a full-stack application. We'll be getting to this as we progress through the course, but I thought I'd, I'd introduce it um, early on. And uh, we did look at it before a little bit. We looked at, at um, back-end servers. I showed you how you might do some of those. Um, I also talked to you a little bit about how you might um, use JavaScript, of course, on the front end. And now what I want to do today is I want to be able to have a JavaScript or any other web server backend and be able to access that from within JavaScript running in a page server, either the server that you downloaded the, 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 um, the JavaScript from or from some other place. Okay? And doing that, in fact, can cause some kinds of problems as well. So we, we wanted to demonstrate this. So, Let's progress um, if we can. It doesn't seem to want to behave today. Okay. So as I said, we're in week five. Um, and we're, you know, next week will be week six, and that will be the end of the module for the first, sorry, end of the first half of the module. And um, yeah, so we're moving fairly rapidly. I know there's a lot of content. I know it's tough going. If you're not feeling stretched a little bit, then there's probably something wrong there. But um, yeah, there's a lot to do. But I, I do like the lectures to be a little bit ahead of the assignments, so some, some time to work with the assignments as well. And um, let's move on. So the plan for today, then, is to introduce several new JavaScript-related concepts. For example, we're going to look at AJAX and jQuery. We should be making use of AJAX and jQuery where possible, really. It's, a, it's my advice to you. And later, AJAX via jQuery as they generally use this greatly with cross-browser compatible client-server applications. And we see a little bit about that later today. So really our goal is to be competent in accessing and manipulating content using a client. That would be a HTML, CSS, and JavaScript app. And that would be held um, in an online database behind some server app that's written in whatever technology you're interested in using. It could be written in PHP, it could be written in any language. You know, it could be written in Python, it doesn't matter, Java. Um, it's fine. And the idea is that we want to gate that content behind some web server and access it over HTTP. And so instead of just serving pages, we're serving content that we're able to capture from within the app that we're running on the web page and then manipulate it and display this. So we're going to see some Node.js today. Um, we're going to see some database stuff today. Um, we're going to, it's, and that's kind of a necessity, really, um, uh, for the rest of the module. And then we're going to see some Ajax, then some jQuery. We might even see Ajax through jQuery. And tomorrow, or in the next lectures, we're going to see some PHP as well. And I'll be showing you some PHP running today, but we don't have to worry about learning PHP just yet. I'm in this lecture just to show you how I've built some software and how we can access it using jQuery. So there's a lot, um, there's a lot to do, a lot to cover. And really, it's to give you a sense of what's happening you know, in terms of how that whole Ajax thing works. I go into this in a lot more detail in the lessons, which will follow um, tomorrow. Um, you guys aren't watching the lessons. It's exceptionally disappointing because there's a lot of material in there that would be good for you and, and it will give you the practice. And as the course gets a little bit more difficult and it will get more difficult and the assignments get a little bit more um, focused on this kind of material, you will, need to, you will need to know all that material. So I would recommend you look at the lessons as well as just um, coming and looking at the main lecture. But it's good you're here and you will catch up on it as well. So. Okay, so really what we're interested in looking at now is we, and in terms of Ajax, we want to be able to look at some database connectivity with some server-side Java, JavaScript. 
and we're going to do this using Node.js, for example. We're also going to do it with PHP. But so part of the requisites for this particular module is that you should all have done the database module. It's because we utilize databases in web development to design, to, to drive database-driven content. So if you think in terms of a web store, you, um, you can think of somebody trying to sell stores online, or sell, sell products online, then they're all held in some database. And then the idea of the database software is to be able to produce a nice interface with your products or to be able to produce something based on user selections um, for carts and then be able to make it work. And so um, that all hinges on you understanding and knowing your database. So you have to be able to access those data from the database using your server-side software. And we can use Node.js, we can use PHP, we can use Python with Flask, we can use Java, all of these things. You know, really what happens is you need to have some connectivity between your server running your server-side app and the database itself. And then you need to have some way of communicating with that app that's running in the server, usually over HTTP with, um, uh, for web-based access. So this kind of thing we're going to have a look at today and, and we'll sh show you how it works. Don't worry if you don't get how to do it all. I will give you all the code. But um, it's a sense of getting a sense of how it all works and hangs together is really the important thing today. And we go into the details in some of the lessons on how to make it happen in a little bit more detail. Okay, so, so the first thing we're going to look at we're going to look at how to connect, query, and manipulate relational database tables using Node.js, okay? So in practice, you can use any of your favorite programming languages, okay? Java, PHP, Python, it doesn't matter. And for the example that I'm going to look at, we're going to use server-side JavaScript, and the principles will apply to all other languages. So, but in order for it all to work, we have to need to have a database server running on some host and have a user with authenticated access to a database in the host when the application is running. So our examples, and the ones I'm going to use from here on, here on is that um, we run on the host localhost, okay? And that's really um, localhost and that's a server. And we're gonna use the MariaDB database that comes with XAMPP. And if you don't know what that is, then you didn't look at the lessons up until now, because I went through all of this last time. So you really need to know what happened beforehand before you really understand how this works. That's gonna be our database server. We've already set up, um, a user called node user, and that has the password node user. It's unimaginative for, for, for demos here. And we're going to be using a database also called node user unimaginatively. Okay, so in practice, you'd have to much more secure authentication, but this setup will do for the examples. So I'm going to switch now, and I'm going to switch to my um, server management. As you can see, we have uh, XAM, I have XAM running at this particular machine. And again, I showed you how to do this in earlier lessons. Um, I'm going to look at the servers. I'm going to click here on the manage servers. I can click the server. And I can see that my SQL database is running and my Apache web server is running. So this will serve my web pages and this will serve my database. And I can access the database by looking at um, PHP my admin running on my, on my database server. So let me go and have a peek and see the database running. Um, and we can see that the database is running on localhost and it's using PHP my admin, which is a piece of software that we can use to query and, and manipulate databases that are online. You can see that I have a database. This is the database view. I could create database. I could do all of the SQL commands that you would know and love from your database module. Um, I could do all of that in a nice window based environment here. I can issue SQL. I can, I can look at the user accounts. You can see there's a node user in there. If I click here, you'll see that there's a user um, called node user. And I've created this user already and they can do all of these things, which is probably not a great idea, but that's fine. Um, um, I see the query coming from tag XAMP references MySQL for some reason. Um, yeah, the, it will be, but MariaDB is, is, is a variant of MySQL. So it will work with MySQL. MySQL was free. It was taken over by Oracle and is now um, Oracle's free version of, of uh, a database server. But, so it's the same and it works fine. So but it's, I will continue to refer to it as MySQL anyway, because it will work everywhere. Good question, good point though. Okay, so we see I have this database called Node User. If I click through to Node User, you'll see that this particular database has one single table. And this table is called CD set. Okay, so what I'm trying to do is I'm going to show you here. Um, uh, I see a question coming in from Jordan there, and do we download PHP? My bin? that comes entirely through with if you install um, if you install the XAMPP as I've outlined in the earlier lessons, it will be there for you. Okay, um, 
so anyway, but um, so it's it's good anyway. Um, and uh, so anyway, I have one table here called CD set, and I can click and browse, have a look at this table, and you can see that it's a, a very simple table. You know, it has um, an ID, an artist's name, a title, a category, tracks played, and release date. So, so this is for um, those of us that are old enough to remember when, when um, music came on CDs or even vinyl, um, but uh, I have these on vinyl and CD, I guess, and, and in, in my iPod as well, of course. So I've only got details for one set of um, one band here and um, one artist called Leibach, and these are some of their albums that they produced. And um, so I've just got these into my database. And so really I want to have a, an online database where I can access this CD content. Okay, so really that's just a test table. It could be anything at all. It could be shoes. I, but I'm more into lie back than I am into shoes. So anyway, so um, yeah, one of my favorite bands. So um, so this is my database, okay? So what I want to be able to do is I want to be able to play and access this using software, okay? Rather than just using my normal SQL queries. So I know that's sitting and running in this SQL database. So, so it's nice to have it there. And so what I want to do is I want to be able to run software that's able to query this. And I want, to, so I don't have to go into my, my um, my MySQL shell or, or whatever shell you used when you were playing with databases before, I want to be able to have it running on that server and then to be able to talk to it using my own client. Okay? And um, so let's go with there, okay? So that's basically the idea. And all of this can be provided with XAMPP. You don't have to do anything to install anything other than XAMPP and then you can just go and set up that. And in fact, set up your, your, your database. In fact, I provide you with all of the information to set up and create that, that database. Um, let me see if I've got it here. Um, let me go to Finder. And you can see that I have um, all of this database stuff will be available for you on some data. I haven't pulled it over here, but it's, uh, it's in another library. But yeah, you'll be able to, you'll be able to download all. Okay, I have it available. Okay, so let's get back to this. Okay, so that's part of the plan. That's what we're going to look at today. So we are... So you can use the command line MySQL, or you can use PHP My, um, My Admin to verify everything is accessible before you start working with your code. So once the database is set up and accessible, you can access it using Node.js by, by installing a MySQL driver. Okay, and this will be the MySQL module, not a MariaDB module, and that can be downloaded and installed using um, npm, the Node Package Manager. And we've used modules like HTTP before. I showed you this before, um, but um. We didn't, uh, we didn't need to install that particular one. You know, it came already installed with Node. But um, so if you have Node, Node installed in your computer, you can just go npm prompt MySQL and it will install everything for you and should be fine in order to manipulate the MySQL database. So I see a question from, or it's either a question or a comment from Ty. Yeah, the XAMPP interface will look different on Windows. It will look different on my, um, on my uh, Mac. Um, and there may be a newer version for the Mac that works as well that will be different. And uh, uh, yeah, but the functionality will still be there and has been there for a good while until now. Um, I, I think, um, and it's the same, you know, with the various versions of everything we use, you know, um, whatever works, works for you. I mean, of course, I only use this XAMPP for teaching purposes, okay? I mean, I have my own Apache 2 installation on my machines, and I have my own versions of my databases installed, and I use all of those as well separately. So we don't actually have to use it, but for students learning, XAMPP is great. Out of the box, you have all that stuff set up for you. At some point, you may need to go in and design and set it all up for yourself, okay? But anyway, that's another story. So when we have the module installed, okay, we can use it then to set up an authenticated connection to the database using create connection method that comes with the MySQL um, module. So we can just use this module in Node.js. We can create a connection and we can use all the data that we know um, what the host is, the username, the password, and, um, and then we can create a connection. And then we can um, issue some query if we want. So that's not so bad, you know. So it's nice to be able to do all that stuff. So I have a little program called demo1.js and it will make a connection. Once the connection's in place, we can issue all the SQL commands we want using the query, query method. These will just be your normal SQL commands that you would use from your, um, from your uh, database course. Okay, so the code here on the right, you can see, um, here's the various 
commands that we use to issue queries and it'll be query string here. And you can put in your normal SQL commands here and that would be fine. So we, we can also use the MySQL driver to perform all sorts of database and table manipulation if you need. So, you know, you have to watch the privileges for apps. However, you don't want them to be able to create tables and all the kind of stuff. And insertion might be fine, but probably might not be fine either. So you have to be careful who has, who has, um, who has priorities and privileges in order to be able to do all that kind of stuff. But for this module, we just, I tend to open things up and you can do anything you like, but it's so easy to crash servers and do all sorts of fun things, but um, by manipulating their tables, but we, we won't do that. So this was demo one. So I probably have this um, running for you. So let me see if I can get this for you. So um, I'll pop over to um, uh, here and let's see. So let's clear this. Yeah, and then um, you can see that demo one is here. So it's a Java program you'll be able to run and it will be fine. So let's run this. Let's look at it first. And you can see that it's pretty much a straight copy of the, of the code. So looking at my spell and really I want to do is connect to that database server. I'm not doing anything. We're just connecting. Okay, so let's do this by issuing the command node demo. And we can see that we've connected. So it works. Okay. So we've connected and we're hanging on to this connection and it's a bad, bad, bad thing to do. Really, we want to be able to connect, do the business in terms of getting the querying we want and then whatever the business logic is and then we just disconnect so i'm just going to manually disconnect here but you know you do need to disconnect all the time so that's a very simple service so we can have a look and see if any other um okay let's let's go back to the slides and so now what we want to do is we want to be able to take data from the table okay so i'm gonna i i always have this question is well what do you think that the data is going to look like okay so um what happens is that we have some basic well, let me have a look at the code let's have a look at some code yeah let's have a look at more code. always good to look at some code um let's clear this um maybe i have it in vs code as well for you okay. might be easier to read uh let me see there's demo two okay so here is um a, a demo program okay a bit more extensive okay and what happens here is that i'm setting up the database connection within node then i'm establishing the query so i'm creating a connection now and I'm connecting to the database as database user, node user. Now I'm selecting all from CD set. So I'm able to issue the normal SQL command that we know about um, and pass it on to the server or to the database server. And with a bit of luck, everything would be successful. And then I'm going to get display the result. So we can see this and have a look at what the result will be. So let's run this program. I'm on the right hand side again here. Okay. And this was, um, and you can see that what happened here is that I made a connection to the database with my node program, node user, the query was successful as we would expect. And now I see the data here where we have this raw packet data coming back. The ID, the artist was live back. First album is Nova Acapola. And the information, the release date, 86. Second one, lie back. The album, the title is Opus Day, and release 87, Volk, and, uh, you know, and so forth. And there's only four, so we expect to see four. And yeah, sure, lie back Spectre, which is 2014 now. So, so it works nicely for us in order to be able to do this. Okay, But look at the data that's coming back. Look at the data. Um, it's really interesting. It looks like JSON, right? It looks very like JSON. It's organized as... as, as um, as uh, some uh, J array of JSON data. That's really nice, and that's not accidental. Okay? That's like on purpose. So let's have a peek now and go back to the program. So what do you think is going on here? So it looks like JSON. Um, why does it look like that? It looks like that because console.log, which was the, the Node.js function I used to print it, printed it that way. And it returned, you know, it was returned as an array of row packet data objects. That was the lowest level MySQL driver library. And it's not JSON because as a JSON serializer, it wasn't used to display it. So it looks like it, it feels like it, it almost seems like it is. We couldn't make it pure JSON if we wanted. There's a couple of idiosyncrasies around it, okay? But actually what's happening is that row packet data is the name of some constructor function that creates like an object. So it would look like like a new row packet ID. And you can check that by looking at its name and playing with it and getting all the individual items as you want, pulling out all the tables. 
So we can get all sorts of other information. We can pull out the individual queries, queries fields, from, fields from the query, and you can have a look at the documents to become an expert in using this module. And I'd recommend you start doing this a little bit later. So now, um, so that's, that's fun, okay, to be able to be able to do all that stuff and be able to manipulate and use programs to access our data. In fact, if we go back to our browser, this is actually a PHP program that's also accessing the database and it's displaying it like this because that's the user interface it's decided to use because it looks like tabular like it looks like a database like because that's how we know it will work. So this is just the program. This program here is a PHP program that actually does that work. So what I'm really interested in doing is I'm looking at seeing can I write a PhD program, PHP program, that, and here's one that's using some PHP that will access my database. Okay. And so really what I want to do now is see can I can I do this a little bit? Let's increase the view a little bit. So we zoom in a little bit. So it might be easier to see a little bit better here. So now I want to search my database in my library. So I'm going to look at, oh, okay. So I can see I have this type of head stuff that's going on. So this is really nice. So we've got some nice local JavaScript that's processing the data that's been typed into this box. And it's sending a request to the database server. And it's able to do immediately do a select and return everything that matches the O as part of the query. So if I do P, it only matches Nova Acropola and Opus Dei, and I can click and move to this. So it's a really nice interface to be able to get the information about a particular one, about a particular album or about particular information in your library. And what's happening here is that this particular front end software is talking to the back end service and it's able to the database server and it's able to pull back all that information to us. So there's a program running on the server side that's generating all this information and sending it back to this client side that makes it work a little bit. And we can look at the source code for here. And I mean, a good way to do this, of course, is to click on your developer tools, either within Safari or wherever you want to be able to do it. So we're going to look at the console. And I can look at the sources here to have a look at the sources. And I can see the source of this document in here. And I can see that there's a lot of JavaScript going on in here. A lot of JavaScript that's telling me to actually do that work. OK, so this is actually jQuery, a jQuery version. OK, um, but it's making that connection across to the, service, to the server, pulling out that information, and then displaying the information that's been passed back. Let's have a quick look at the code that does this. Okay, so the, the code that does this is, is, uh, is this piece of PHP here. So this PHP is responsible for querying the database. And it's doing the exact same job that the Node.js software is doing, except it's doing it in PHP. This is server side. It's a PHP app. You can see it's a PHP app because I'm telling you here it's a PHP. So really what's happening is that all this stuff is running on the server, talking to the database and outputting something. And we're capturing that output here and displaying it. So it's really interesting as far as that we don't have to reload this page in order to make new queries. What's happening is that we're overwriting the existing content. And this is where Ajax works and this is how ajax works it allows us to be able to make connections to services and servers from within our html app which is a html css javascript app and it's able to make that connection across the servers to the server across over the internet to these servers and extract that information and manipulate it in this case the manipulation just just um, displays it like You'll notice that it, there's a little bit of extra value here than there was with the server side software that we wrote, which just gave us the information in straightforward JSON like format, but there was nothing about the displays or the, the album covers or any of that kind of stuff. That was all value added stuff. That was nice because we could make it work within this, within this browser environment. 
So it's a very, very powerful, very, very powerful technique. And you've seen this happening all the time. You know, you know how this works. Um, it's um, you're used to going to Google and auto typing and pulling back some information and lists and so forth as you type dynamically. I mean, that auto completion is really, really useful. And that's very, very powerful. Now, we'll see how to build all that stuff over the coming weeks. Okay? And that the whole plan is to be able to build and show how you might build all that. Okay? So let's um, switch back again. Okay, so um, I'm gonna go back to the slides. And really what I wanted to do was give you some sense of how you can do all of this manipulation of databases, and you can do all of this manipulation um, via programs that you choose. You don't have to do everything within the, the MySQL shell that you would. You can write your own code. And if you make that code into a server, then it will work really nicely for you. So as I said, my, my code was written in PHP, and then it was, um, it was a really nice um, PHP, but it was, uh, I could also have written the backend server instead of contacting our, our, our local host via the um, XAM service, I could have written uh, a Node.js server that did all of that work and contact the Node.js server using a Node app. I could have done that if I wanted. I have done, I'll give you an example. Okay, so Ajax is the power behind making all this work for you. And that's really what's crucial in all of this, okay? That you need to know what's possible, and then you need to know how to make it possible, okay? So, Ajax. So one of the reasons we went through all of that stuff was because we might want to actually access JSON content from some static file, or that was dynamically generated from some database or from our clients that are written in HTML and CSS and JavaScript. So up until now, we've been working with client-side JavaScript mostly to process JSON data created in the client-side drop. We saw how to do this in the server-side also, but we, we have the data structures, when we do data structures using JSON, we can generate JavaScript objects and we can have fun playing with the data. What we can't do yet is to dynamically ingest the data that's JSON, HTML, text, et cetera, from some source outside of the currently running JSON app or, or, or um, application. So for example, we don't have a way to update the contents of a div element from some source on a server, either a static or dynamically generated document. And so we can do this using, J using Ajax, okay? Um, and Ajax stands for asynchronous J JavaScript and XML. So like JSON, Ajax is not a programming language. It's just a technique accessing web servers from within a web page using JavaScript. So we can use Ajax, for example, if you look at the W3 Schools tutorial to update a web page without reloading the page. You can request data from a server after the page has been loaded. You can receive data from a server after the page has been loaded and send data to a server in the background. It's really powerful, really, really powerful functionality. And we can write complex client server, HTML, CSS, and JS apps because we have Ajax present. So here's a, a way to do what I refer to as the traditional Ajax. Okay, so if you look at the bottom left, I have some information that I've stored in a file here. Okay, um, and the file is called ajaxinfo.txt. Okay, and all it is is just some information here. So it's um, about Ajax, okay? And what I want to be able to do is I have um, a piece of HTML code. So let's ignore the JavaScript for a second. I mean, here's an HTML document, okay? And here we have an ID called demo, and we're gonna let Ajax change the text. So when we click the button, this button here, we're going to load a document from the server and update the contents of this div element, overwrite it, in fact, with the, what we receive back from that, from that server. And that's happened, this loading of the document from another content from another service is Ajax. And Ajax is based around this XHTTP um, request um, function module that exists within JavaScript and most modern browsers. Okay? And really what you do is you set up a callback function that does the work. And then uh, once we actually make the request, we're able to get to, to the particular um, Okay, here we are, we're gonna make the request to download this. And when it's done, okay, 
we're able to call this function and what this function does and um, when it's done and correct ready state four means that we're completed and state is 200 means that the http um error code is 200 so that's fine everything worked fine we're going to update the inner html of the demo element that's on this page okay and so that's how it works so the response text is the information that comes back from the server okay so we set up a document as we set up a callback function create a new object set up this callback function we open and as soon as the callback function is done we we um we we uh get the update let's see that work so let's look at the server so here's my server and here's the file ajax dot ajax info dot text we have a quick look at this okay that's the file that's sitting on the server here it's on the web server it's in my htdocs directory and um, as you can see it's in the htdocs here okay so we're gonna we look we can actually access that from within our within within our server as well so um let's do that Okay, and so we were able to access and verify that this data is sitting on our server, okay? So that's nice. So what we want to be able to do though, is we want to be able to get that and call that and access that from within another, another, another application. So here's an, uh, the Ajax demo running. Okay, so we're gonna Ajax change this text. Okay. I click this button to change the content. This probably won't work. Clicking, 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 nothing worked. The reason it didn't work, because in order for Ajax to work, you have to, the file that's making the call needs to be on the server. Where in it, the default position is that it needs to be on the same server as the file it's trying to retrieve. Okay? This is a security issue. And we can verify this by Let's go down having a look at our console. And we're seeing all these errors, okay? Making it's not happy with this HTTP, XML HTTP request, this Ajax request. It doesn't like it. It's not allowed by access control origin. And this is really serious stuff because it means that we can't, we, we can't write local programs or use content from other servers. And that's uh, unless they explicitly allow us to be able to do that. And we haven't allowed that to happen. How do we fix this? Okay. So we can fix this by actually calling this file. Because this is, in, this is come, reading it from a file here. We're looking, we need to call demo4 on the server. Okay, so let's see if we can do this. So we look at localhost demo4. So now it's on the server. Okay. Now we can click this button. And we were able to record, replace it. Okay. So what's clear here is that the software that calls or the program that calls or makes the Ajax request almost always, almost always, by default, has to be on the same server as the act content it's accessing. What happens otherwise is we have what are called these cross-origin issues. And we, we have to be really careful about that. So sometimes it doesn't work because you know, you haven't set up this thing called course. This, in other words, this permissions to allow us to be able to access content. from So that's Ajax working. It does work. It's very nice. It's very powerful. And, and it's quite straightforward and simple to do. Um, you can have a look at this code and you can, you know, for example, if you want to understand it, the HTTP request on ready state change property that contains an event handler that's called when the ready state change event is fired and that happens every you know that, and all this information is readily available for example in the mozilla developer network i think i've uh, i think i've um opened all that stuff for you somewhere yep so you can get all that information if you go to the the mozilla developer.mozilla.org and you can get all the information on this but for now i guess it's okay for you just to be able to know that this function works every time Okay, and then you can actually embed your, your JavaScript that you want to be fired after you make the request here.
takes a little bit of practice, but it's worth it. Okay. So now let's um let's move on. I wouldn't be worried about the use of XML in the name Ajax, by the way. And um, they might use XML to transport data, but it's equally common to transport power to data as plain text or JSON. Okay. Ajax uses this browser built-in object, XML HTTP request, to request this data from the web server, and it uses JavaScript and HTML DOM to display or, or manipulate that data. Ajax allows web pages to be updated asynchronously by exchanging data with a web server. In the background, that means it's possible to update parts of a web page without reloading the whole page. So you can almost build a nice user interface that's dynamic and responsive using Ajax. But as I mentioned and showed you already, for security reasons, modern browsers don't allow access across domains. Okay, so I couldn't access the machine, that, the data that was running on my web server using a file that was loaded on my disk drive because there were different domains. If they were both on the web server, it was all okay. But the web page and the file it tries to load must be located in the same server. And they were both on local host. That's how it worked in the end. And this is an issue is around cross-origin resource sharing cores. And it's a W3 spec that allows cross-domain communication from within the browser. I'm going to delve into that topic in the, in the next lecture's lessons, and I'll show you examples of how to do that. But it's really, it's very, very doable. So the Ajax steps are, you can look at W3 schools if you wanted some more detail, of course. An event occurs in some page. So the page is loaded, the button is clicked, something happens. Okay? Then the request object is created by JavaScript, the Ajax object. Then the object sends a request to a web server. The server processes the request. The server sends a response back to the web page. And the response is read by JavaScript. And then some proper action like an update is performed by JavaScript. Those are the seven steps that happen every single time when you're doing, when you're doing with this. So there's a lot, lot going on, okay? Um, it'd be easy just to copy and paste it and use it without actually knowing what's happening. And you could do that and it would work. And maybe do that the first time just to see it works. Then start making some changes. You gotta ask yourself, is this a synchronous or an asynchronous request? Can you make both types of requests? If it doesn't use a get method, method what, what, what's that anyway? Is there any other way? How do we send data to the server? We're looking at getting data back from the server. How do you send it across? Lots and lots of questions should be appearing at this stage. So all web communication to the browser utilizes HTTP, as we've seen before. So it should be unsurprising to know that the Ajax request handles things so that its proper protocol requests are observed. So all it's doing is automating that manual communication that we saw in class a couple of lectures ago. Okay? I used get. It didn't go into too much detail. It just looks like we used the verb to get a document, and it does that. But it also facilitates sending data to the server as part of the request. And there's another way to get data using post. Okay? I'm going to talk about these in the next lecture's lessons again when we get back to Ajax. So um, I'll just show you another um, quick demo of Ajax in action and then explain it in one of the lectures. So we should be able to have a, a server running as well. So let me clear this display again. I think it was demo 10. So let's. Yeah, it's here. Okay, yeah, maybe I'll just show it to you in VS Code. So in demo 10, there's demo 10. What's happening here is I have demo 10 running um, as a server. Okay, um, and this server is a Node.js server that I've written. Um, and it does exactly what the previous PHP software did, except it's running on localhost 3000. And it accesses the database, sets up a web server, and then serves that information so that I can access it. Let's have a quick look. It's running. Well, let me just actually... Let me make a small change to the code, okay? Just so you can see a little bit more information what's happening. I think I have some commenting here, so I can, yeah. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you the request that's coming via Ajax, okay? So, and I'm gonna log that. So now we're listening on localhost. Um, so what I'll do now is I'll go to 
my browser and I'm going to run a piece of software. This was Ajax PHP. So I have one that runs Ajax Node. Okay, so this is one that accesses Node. Okay, so I'm downloading this issue from Node. So I'm using this, I'm accessing the Node server now um, using my this piece of software that's loaded on my um, localhost web server. And I'm going to go, oh, okay. So a lot happened. If you look at this, you can see that it behaved as exactly as I had expected before here, I'm getting the results for typing in O and over Acropola, Vulcan, Dopus Day. And you'll notice that lots of stuff is happening in the window on the right here. So what I'm doing is I'm actually, all the information that's been, you should see that there's a query. Yeah, there's a query, select. Select star from CD set where title is like O ordered by ID limited to five. And I'm generating all of this stuff with my Node.js and I'm sending it back to the server here. Um, so I can, I just go OP so I can get Opus Bay and Nova Acapola. And you can see, again, if you watch the, watch the display on the right here as I t type in U. Okay, so I've got Opus Day coming through here, that album. Okay, now the question that comes, and I don't have a Mentimeter slide today, but the question I guess I ask you is, you know, do you think there's anything strange about what's happening here? This is a program that was downloaded from localhost. Okay, this was downloaded from localhost. This is a web server that comes with XAMPP running this program that's making an, and accessing a web server that was generated running as a node program on port 3000. So can I of you maybe type into the chat, let me know what's weird about this, or maybe it's not weird. It all looked like it was working as it did previously, but previously I was running this file, which was written in PHP on localhost, and it was accessing a PHP application on localhost to be able to do this. Actually, it's very different. Can anyone maybe tell me why you might think that would be the case? What, what, what's strange about this? Any ideas? No? Well, remember the error that we had earlier. Remember the errors that we had when we were running this one here? we were able to try to access the software. We got all those errors because we were trying to load this from the file, file here. Okay? And we were getting all sorts of, of console errors when we were looking at lo loading this. And well, what happened previously was that we were, we were looking at cross origins. The file was trying to access the server. The same thing applies here. Um, this web server is trying to access this web server. They're different origins. They're run, both running on the localhost, but one is running on port 80 locally and the other is running on port 2000. And the issue here, of course, is that the reason it works is because I've told it to work. I have told the browser that you can make this request explicitly to this other server and it will allow you to be able to make a cross origin request. So, and I've told the server to accept specific services, allow them to be able to access it, even though it's a different origin. Okay, so I made up. The reason it works is because I made it work this time. By default, it wouldn't work. That's a really important aspect that you need to become aware of, and that will be covered, um, that will be covered in uh, the lessons that follow. I'll give you, I'll go through all the examples and show you how to do this. Okay, um, there's a question there. Um, do they have to be on the same port? No, they don't. Well, yes, they have to be on the same port for it to work. Um, you know, uh, by default, if they're on different ports, then you have to explain their different origins. So yes, just not just the, the IP address, but also the port and that IP address. Good question. And um, thanks for asking. Okay, so let's Leave that for now, um, and as I say, there'll be lots of detail on how this works 
a little bit later in my in the lessons that follow. Okay, let's have a look at jQuery. So the purpose of jQuery, first thing we need to know about that jQuery is that jQuery is JavaScript. Okay, jQuery is not an alternative. I often get people, students saying to me, is it okay to do this in jQuery rather than JavaScript? Well, actually jQuery is JavaScript, okay? And really what it is, is its purpose is to make easier use of JavaScript on a website. It takes an awful lot of common tasks. It's a library, essentially, okay, a framework. And it takes tasks that would take many, many lines of JavaScript code to accomplish. It wraps them into simple methods that you can call with a single line of code. Okay? It also simplifies a lot of the complicated stuff from JavaScript, like making Ajax calls and DOM manipulation. jQuery library contains the following features. HTML and DOM manipulation, CSS manipulation, HTML event methods, effects, UI manipulation, animations, Ajax, and utilities. Okay. jQuery is what we call a lightweight, write less, do more JavaScript library or framework. And but what, what happens is that if you have a browser, like I'm, you'll notice that in my examples, um, there I was looking at Safari here and I have Chrome, okay? But Safari and Chrome will do things differently. And if I'm using Edge, they will do, it will do things differently as well. So the DOM that's used may not be the exact same in all of them, okay? And so we might need to be able to write different kinds of JavaScript in order to make it work across all the various browsers. If we use jQuery, we can often make a single command that will work everywhere because the underlying library will handle all of those individual differences, individual browser differences. So it's why it's, it's very powerful. I usually ask students not to use jQuery early on because by doing so, you actually don't get a, a good understanding of how to do the basic stuff and how it all works. jQuery hides a lot of that from you and your computer science students, so you need to know how to write jQuery libraries, for example. You're not just consumers. You are software engineers. You're producers, and I need you to know how to do stuff. So that's why sometimes I, I ask you not to use jQuery. So again, it's a framework for JavaScript development. It's cross-browser compatible and straightforward to use. You can use it as an external library like this. Um, you can, you can uh, access it. You know, you can tell it to load it, or you can actually access it from the web. Okay, and you know, there's the very, and there'll be various versions of jQuery. The examples that I used when I made the slide was, you know, 3 3 one and it's quite, quite forward. Um, and it's just JavaScript that you load, and then you make it work. The jQuery syntax is a tailor made for selecting HTML elements and performing some action on those elements. So the basic syntax is a dollar selector that allows you to select some element and then perform some action, dot action. So the dollar defines access to jQuery. The oh gosh, sorry. Um, the selector is the query and that finds some element and the action is performed on the element. So you could look at something like this, right? So dollar this dot hide will hide the current element. Dollar p dollar p hide hides all the p elements. Dollar dot test height hides all elements with class uh, test, and dollar hash test height hides all elements with ID test. So you know the, this is a selector and this is an action, and you need to learn those. And then once you learn them, you'll be fine with knowing how to use them. Um, jQuery and being ready. So you know there's uh, this is something about being ready. We we saw an earlier example. We we know from programming experience that we can't process the DOM elements until they're actually created and are accessible via the DOM. So we see the unready event handler, the body element, which specifies the function that you call when the DOM is ready. And you may have seen that if you try to copy some stuff from, from JS Fiddle, for example. But as, JS, as jQuery accesses the DOM elements using CSS selectors, again, we have to be sure that the jQuery functionality happens when the DOM is ready. So we accomplish that using either of the following statements. And um, we can either write an anonymous function that is an event handler that calls when the DOM is ready, Either this way, dollar document already function, and then all of your jQuery stuff goes in here, or dollar function, and it all goes in here. There's two ways to do. It. You'll see some examples, and you can try each of them. The code inside the document already will only run once the DOM is loaded and ready for JavaScript code, and you can write very simple code to check this. Um, code included inside the dollar window on load function will run once the entire page, not just when the DOM is ready. Once everything is loaded. Experienced developers use the shorthand dollar brackets 
instead of the usual dollar document already. So this you'll see is often just the same. So if you're new to jQuery, begin with using the long form and then as you know, experience you can the bigger form. You don't need to do jQuery, okay, for this course. You don't need to do jQuery at all. It's sometimes efficient, it's good, it's useful to know. Um, you know, it can you can get on fine without using it. Um, but um using it sometimes does make life easier. So here, for example, is an example. Here's some code that you run with a ready function, and we can just say document ready, or we can just window load ready function, or you can use. Any. There's a, a brilliant learn jQuery learning center. Go there. You can have a look at lots of the examples. Also, what's nice in terms of jQuery is the event handling, and you saw some event handling when you were looking at, at pushing buttons and all that kind of stuff, you know. And it's really the I like that aspect of the library it makes the process as easy. It's consistent across all browsers, and jQuery provides these high-level dot bind and dot unbind functions generically attach and attach event handlers on some match set of elements. That means it's very easy to attach events to many objects at once, like the click handler for every row on the table, for example. Most of the common events like click, key, mouse events, they all have dedicated handlers built and produced already. Dot click, dot mouse down, dot change, all that sort of stuff. And the jQuery event handler simply take a function as a parameter and jQuery tracks all those handlers so you can unbind them later. It's very, very nice. And um, jQuery's approach to event handling is one of the nicest aspects. Um, as I said, it's, it's really, really lovely. And um, I'd recommend you have a look at this. You, if we go back you'll be able to see let me have a look at some of the code we go back here we can look at some code in my this is traditional code that's using ajax using the normal traditional functions and i suspect i have an example of how to do this using this is jquery so it's nice and this demo will be available and, and available for there's no um jQuery in this one. Let me see if I've got some Ajax here. Yep, you can see that here I'm looking at some Ajax. Um but I'm actually using jQuery to do the Ajax, not the traditional one. And that's um that's yeah, again in this example here, I'm actually using jQuery to do the Ajax rather than the Ajax that I showed you earlier. Okay, they both work, but Ajax jQuery is really nice because I can do some this cross origin. But you'll see that in the in the lessons. So that's um, pretty much my overview of of uh, Ajax and jQuery. Thanks for coming along today, and it's really uh, it's good to have you here and. Um, you know, have a look at the lessons and look at the code and it will work quite nicely for you. Okay, thanks again. I'll um, see you next week.